Um, yeah, I just think the the, the whole Brandon Ayuk conversation, uh, the conversation itself may end up being the most dangerous part about this um, just because it, it gets super dramatic. And that's, as you know, we talk a lot about this. Like in this day and age of social media, we want that more than the sport itself sometimes. What's more exciting, the NBA in season or the NBA off season? Well, the off season for the NBA. All right. I mean, the NBA finals are not going to happen. I'm I being mean, told uh, br- they've been canceled. I wouldn't even know. You're right. right. Yeah, it's I been wouldn't a week even know. since we actually had basketball. There, there, it's another night tonight where there was not a no basketball hoop, yeah. game. Yeah. Uh, here's another example. Anybody actually watch a WNBA game this year? Or do you just want to talk about people? Oh, let's getting... talk about flagrant fouls. <laughs> you just want to talk. Angel about... Reese had her second technical rescinded. She got, uh, but she got tossed. But her second tech got rescinded. That's fine. Those two techs came about one and a half seconds apart. Right. It was tech and gone. Well, and I, <laughs> it's funny you say that because I Whoa. watch more women's basketball than ninety five percent of the people in America. Yet I'm not locked in, but. Every headline, wherever I get of my course. sports news, is WNBA controversy. Can we just, like, make it about the basketball? No. Yeah, I'm sorry, but no. Right. It's funny to me, actually, when some of the WNBA players or talkers who've been doing this for a long time, like even that Stephen A thing the other day. Right. With uh, what, Monica, McNutt. Monica McNutt. Yep. And she's like, you could have been doing this three years ago. No, he couldn't. No, he couldn't. Uh, like, no, he couldn't. I like it. It it's funny to me that that's and and then that's the other point you'll hear people bring up. Uh, can we talk about the game? No, we largely don't talk about the game in the NBA. Right. Like we'll get into a Warriors game, but the NBA Finals are tomorrow. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Ooh, Kyrie returns to Boston. No doubt. They're going to yell at him, and he might he might flip them the bird. And they're going to, instead of bleep you Draymond, it's going to be bleep you Kyrie. That's I, I'm, I'm sorry, none of us did this. That's the world now. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's what it is. Well, and that's why the Brandon Ayuk piece is so telling, because right now we're not really worried about Ricky Pearsall and how he looks coming out of his break. And Larry Kruger is... More worried about that. <laughs> and the battle for TE2 with the Niners and how's Brock look on his nine routes and all the rest of it. It's about Brandon Ayuk and his contract. That is what is moving the needle among Niner fans. Drama. Yeah. But I but I, I do think now Brandon has, has fed this, as many do, especially wide receivers, because there has been social media discourse. And that is how people communicate. Uh, in many ways now, especially when they don't want to be direct about it. You know, did Brandon Ayuk actually text John Lynch, money talks, poop emoji walks? I doubt it. Maybe. But he put it on his IG story. Right. That's how people communicate now. Um, or at least a lot of people. It's how a lot of people communicate now. And that's fine. So it's not to say that there isn't. Some stress there. I'm sure that there is. Debo spoke about it yesterday. He said it's very difficult in these situations to not take things personally when a business is sitting there going, "Well, no, you're you're not worth you're not worth fifty million dollars guaranteed. You're worth thirty eight. And you're like, "What do you mean? I'm like busting my butt for you over right. here." And, and and they're like, "Well, no, don't take it personal." And you're like, "How am I not supposed to take it personal? What are you talking about? This is my money, and you're." You're downgrading who you think I am, even though we're we're all partners and like we all get how that process goes. It's very, very difficult. It's also incredibly predictable and inevitable. It is unavoidable. Like a business is never just gonna be like, well. <laughs> it's rare. Patrick Mahomes is a guy who, you know, he walks in and says, you know, I, I think I I might want more money, and they go, Okay. But I know people who think that's actually the biggest bargain in sports. Lee Steinberg gets torched for that contract. Well, he got a new contract since then. Correct. He had it reworked, but you're you're right about the Lee Steinberg piece of he it. He does because, not have the best contract in the NFL at all. Well, nobody ever does. Once you sign it, it's like when you buy a car. When you drive that car off the lot, that car goes down by 
just by you yep. leaving yep. the lot. As soon as you take that thing out onto the open road, that car no longer has the same value that you paid for it. And that's kind of like NFL contracts where no matter what Brandon Ayuk gets, if he's the second highest paid wide receiver or if he comes in at three, four, five, he probably won't be number one because Justin Jefferson got crazy gaga money. But no matter what happens with Ayuk, when he leaves that contract, when the ink is dry, that contract is already not worth as much as it probably would be four years from now yeah. if he's that good. Right. At the same time, though, um, gratitude, I-, I hope, doesn't get lost in all this. Uh, Justin Jefferson just got paid in this contract uh, more than what Randy Moss made in his career. And, and Wow. Okay. Did everyone catch that? Justin Jefferson just got a guarantee. This is year four in the league, and he just got a guarantee that it's more than what Randy Moss made in his career. And many think that that's the most talented receiver who's ever played. He's certainly top five, without a doubt. And it wasn't that long ago. Right. So, like, I, and I'm not asking Brandon to take less because of that. Like, yes, your your market for your position has exploded. Good for you. Take advantage of it. But... I do get a little bummed sometimes when those contracts get signed. You fight for them. You want four years. And as you said, then six months later, you're like, I'm underpaid. No, you're not. Right. No, you're not. Everybody gets their turn. And everybody gets lapped. That's just the way it is. You know what I mean? Brock Purdy is going to make more on this next contract than some crazy accomplished quarterbacks. People who had great careers. It's his turn. Yeah, Peyton Manning, Drew Brees, uh, John Elway, Dan Marino. You think about what those guys were making, and even you go back to Steve Young's big uh, contract when they were able to sign him in the USFL. I think it was the New Jersey Generals, or no, it was the LA Express. The Express. Yep. And he signed. I think uh, he signed a one million dollar deal, <laughs> and it was like, whoa, Steve Young signed for a million bucks. Really loosening it up. That is, I mean, Blake Snell makes that for every start he doesn't make. Oh, God. That Too was, soon. That Sorry, was, that was yeah, a cheap that shot. Was, that was not I probably okay. should have kept it to football. But, that was not okay. I mean, it, Steve Young is getting paid. He got paid 30, 40 years more than Brock Purdy's making this year. Uh, so anyway, the, the, for me, the large point is, is that I have a feeling that the conversation, there's no way to put the toothpaste back in the tube. I'm not suggesting that. No one's going to stop this conversation. No one's going to stop the stress. But it, 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 at a minimum, runs the risk of being 10 times louder than what the reality is here. Um, you know, there's only a couple ways this can go. And I think it's probably going to go the same way most of these go. And 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 I just kind of put flip-flops on and, and grab a foofy drink because I completely trust that when it comes to roster construction and taking care of their own and the people who have played really well for them, um, I'm not going to say the Niners are perfect. I'm going to say they're about as good as any organization I've ever seen at that. They're about as good as any organization I've ever seen. I mean, even if you go back to the, this is a completely different subject, but I think it's related Go back to the Dwight Clark event that we just went to where ex-49ers are taking care of ex-49ers. Right. And Alex Smith pulled us aside and was like, no no other organization in sports is doing this. Nobody. And you're like, oh, that's interesting. I firmly believe that. And you can disagree because Kyle Shanahan did a run play at the wrong time if you want. I think the 49ers are really classy. And I think they take care of their people. And I think a lot of the talk about all the discord in the locker room is made up by people who who want the Lombardi Trophy. And I get it. I want the Lombardi Trophy too. So do they. But all of this acrimony supposedly that's going on and this, boy, you did this to Debo and now you're doing it to Nick and now you're doing it to Brandon. Nobody there feels that way. Brandon feels that way right now. Debo felt that way a month ago when he thought he had been told you weren't going to be traded. And then it was like, maybe you are going to be traded. And then they got over it because everybody gets mad at their employer a time or two when you're going through stuff. But 
in the end, um, when your roster looks like this, <laughs> there's a reason. There's a reason the roster looks like this. People really want to be on it. They really want to be on it or else they wouldn't be on it. And then it's also the nature of the business. If you didn't want to be in a business where you could be traded or you could be cut or your future could be tenuous, then go be a teacher because you work two years and you get tenure and you're good. It's very difficult at that point to lose your job and you can work 30 years and you have a nice pension and it's all good. Yep. So if you want security and if you want that sort of a job certainty, there are places where you can go do that. If you're in a union, if you are a grocer, the good people at Safeway, I used to be in the Safeway union back in, man, 1986 when I was a courtesy clerk. I don't know if they still call them that, but I was in the union and there was a certain path where you could do that for your career and you make good money and you have good benefits and there's a union protection and all the rest of it. If you're a football player, you know you are subject to this exact thing. Now, if you want to be a baseball player or an NBA player where your contracts are guaranteed, that's a different story. A but when different. you're in the NFL, yep. you know that you have a big number, you have a big contract, and it's either fully guaranteed or partially guaranteed or what's the guaranteed at signing. And that's where Brandon Ayuk is right now. And I'm not saying that being a grocer is as dangerous as being an NFL player because it's not. But Brandon Ayuk's in a spot where, at the very worst, he's going to make $14 million to play football this year. And at the very best, he'll get a contract for $60 million guaranteed at signing and $120 million right. over four years. And he's going to be even more set than he already is. I mean, I, I hate like what you're talking about. I hate for the players in the NFL that it works the way it does. There is a piece of me, though, uh, that understands why. It, it's not the NFL's fault that football is as violent as it is. And so the fact that everybody is so prone to injury all the time is part of the reason that the teams need to keep their financial flexibility going into seasons because everyone, oh, just spend, just keep everybody just give it, come on, acknowledge them. They were good last year. And you do that and you just fill your cap up and you're just like everybody, just everybody gets paid. And then four key guys get hurt. Now what? You're screwed. Do you like your season's over? Right. And fans don't want that. So I always, it, sometimes, not always, I scratch my head when people really scream for more loyalty in sports. Because I've also watched that after the teams do display the loyalty that fans want them to display, the fan then gets mad when that contract actually doesn't play out the way they wanted it to. So all this says to me, like, we get emotional about this because we're fans. We wear jerseys and we buy shirts and hats and we sit down for no reason and get totally married to a team. And they don't even know that we're doing it. That's all happening. But the team can't get emotional like that. They can't afford to get emotional. I sat there and watched like I hosted every single uh, after Giants game uh, situation when Brandon Belt and Brandon Crawford and Buster Posey had all been given uh, what felt like thank you contracts. Now, they rallied back in 2021, and they were fantastic, and they had a special season, but go back to 19 and 20. Buster wasn't even playing, and the Brandons looked cooked, and people were really mad. They were fed up. These idiot Giants gave them a thank you contract. Well, you loved it when they did it. Right. Because they're coming off of a World Series win, and you love the loyalty. So that's my only message with this Brandon thing. Like, it has to go this way. It has to take all summer. It has to be stressful. Both sides need to dig in and do their thing. And I have faith that it will play out the way it usually does. Which is they keep their player yes. and their player comes in and he's happy and he should be here for camp. And I know that the preseason starts in early to mid-August. And so that's really where the deadline is. You want him in for preseason you want him to at least be able to practice with the team and run around and get ready for the opener 
when that comes up in September. You don't want to make it a last minute thing. You saw the way it went with Debo, where he came in late and he didn't play great that year. And you saw it with Nick Bosa, who had a little bit of a slow start to his year last year. You want this to get solved before August 1st. I don't know if it will. Feels more and more like this one could possibly drag on, but you got C.D. Lamb still out there and maybe Jamar Chase if he gets his extension. So I think the Niners would be better served by getting this done early as opposed to waiting for all those other comps to come in. What's the concern there, by the way? The price like, goes up. Uh, the price goes up. Already the ceiling has gone up. and if The you wide know, receiver ceiling has gone up. Right, but, but, but if, no, you, if you think that he's not Justin Jefferson, and you can rightly say he's not he's Justin not. Jefferson. Yeah, he's not. But the top of the market is higher than it was a week ago. I think most people would argue he's not CeeDee Lamb. Well, that you know? becomes an interesting one for me. It does. And we heard David Lombardi yesterday on our show say that he's much better than Amon Ross St. Brown. And, well, and I know that the, becomes subjective. Right. I know the metrics he's looking at, but like it's as as you're saying, like both sides are gonna right. come in, and that's why people get offended. Because it all it's like the team is sitting there almost arguing against their own player who they love and they're trying to give a hundred million dollars to. But it sticks you in a bad spot. It does. And it becomes personal. Because if you're Brandon Ayuk, you're coming in and saying, I'm a top five receiver in the league. And if you're the team, you might be saying, well, you were 33rd in catches. So, I mean, are you really top five? We have you at top 20, barely. And it, I'm not going to say that they're taking that approach, but you've been in negotiations and you mentioned it before. When it comes time to really get into the, the weeds of a negotiation, it's not as easy as, you know what, you're as good as we think you're as yeah. good as you think you are. We're going to give you every last dollar. I mean, I, normally, I don't know if it's different in football. I've never been in a football negotiation. Most companies I've ever worked for, when it comes to money and negotiations, they usually use the same tactic. And it's not to compare you to the other people in the industry. They don't usually do that. What they do, <laughs> a little tip, don't listen when they do this, but what they do is they're going to explain to you why at this time, in their organization and at the state of the industry, you're you're going to need to take a little bit less than you want. Right. But we'll get you the next time. Around. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. So I doubt they do that in football because in football, there's the culture of we don't even know if there's going to be tomorrow. Exactly. You can't get me on the next run. My legs might not be attached to my body anymore. So it's a little bit different. But I bet the 49ers absolutely Rather than saying, hey, Brandon, we actually don't think you're as good as you think you are. I do think there has probably been a, a, a conversation with his agent where it's like, look, it, we get it and we love Brandon and we absolutely need Brandon. And we are very willing to give an incredible contract to Brandon. But do understand, we, we have to keep his quarterback in mind now. Like, that's just a thing. And, and and that market has exploded even more than yours. And my goodness, I mean, even Brandon himself, he would he would not be in favor of us having to move on from our our, our, our young uh, star quarterback who's just really turned into something. In fact, who's the, the guy who threw pretty much all yeah. of Brandon's 1,300 yards. You want him to be that, I do think, is probably a part of the conversation. It is, but I'm sure Brandon's people are like, that's a you problem. It's not an us problem, uh, and that's a you problem. And part of your problem is you're paying some other guy 19 problems. Well, he's now wearing number one, and he's making 28 million. So you're going to pay him 28, and you're going to try to pay me 24, 25. That's a you problem, and you, you know your little Brock Purdy problem. You guys it, could figure it, that out down the road. Right now, it's my time. It is, but it is it, it is a Brandon problem too because at the yeah end they won't of, see it that well, way. Well, but it, it's not about how you see it. The bottom line at the end of all of this, and Brandon and his agent know this, and it's one of the reasons you've seen a bunch of receivers who aren't waiting for Justin Jefferson or waiting for August or waiting for C.D. Lamb. You've seen a bunch of them sign because at the bottom tier of all of this, if you really want to get into leverage, the Niners have it. I know that Brandon, sure, has, Brandon does too. He's a good wide receiver. And the Niners need him this year. No question about it. But at the bottom tier of all this, the man is not a free agent. And he's not going to be a free agent anytime soon. And so 
The 49ers, if you really want to get down to brass tacks and be like, we are at a stalemate, so we're not signing a new deal. Who's the one who loses there? I would argue Brandon a hell of oh, a lot more. more. Well, I don't uh, know about a hell of a lot more a because lot more. you're not a Super Bowl team without him, and they know that. Probably you're going to Ricky but, Pearsall me at the X receiver. You're going to no. you're going to win the Super Bowl with Pearsall and Debo and Jawan. I'm going to say you I'm go not buying you it. You go down a major rung, but Brandon is like you're not even getting the year doesn't even count. You're losing millions of dollars every week. Well, he could come in and make it count. He'd come in late. He, he could sacrifice eight weeks of pay and come in late you know and get the credit eight, for the year. You know eight weeks of pay? That's about $8 million Seven for him, no doubt. Bucks. I, I know exactly and, what you're and, talking and about you're as far a, as the sacrifice that he would have to make to go that route. And you're not a free agent at the end of that play. Well, he's a free agent unless they want to franchise him, which, which they won't. Which they can. If they did, then that would cost them probably $27 million for the additional year. No problem. For they're a disgruntled to, receiver. They're trying to pay him that anyway. Right. All you got to do you, is... You'd be paying him 14 or you'd be paying him about eight for him to hold out and then come in late and then get his free agency and then you're going to franchise him for 27 that's changed for a guy i know it's changed but it's not the way the niners do things no. and he knows that no they don't they don't want, use the franchise tag they, ever they do for not good reason. they do not want to do it but it is in their hip pocket and brandon sure. loses way more than the 49ers See, do. i don't think so i do I, I don't think he loses way more because they they wind up as, you know, their Super Bowl window, even though Christian McCaffrey wouldn't address how big that window is, that window is is closing. I get it. And if you don't have Brandon Ayuk, you're not going 13-4 and four and you're not winning the Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, probably not. I wouldn't. Like, you make Brandon sound like he's a quarterback. No, but They're he's... They're worst team. They're not a bad team. They're not a great team. They're yeah. a fine team. And uh, you're asking your young quarterback to now play with Debo Samuel and... A bunch of rookies and unproven guys. No, there's other there's other guys on the roster who have played wide receiver in the league. I mean, for 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 a minute. Um, I'm not saying it's good. I just think there's a lot more on Brandon. 